Hey guys, what's up? Um, I'm here, uh, gonna try to review Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. This is the PS3 version, I got it last year. I really, really like it. This is the PC version, which, uh, it dropped its price down to maybe about 30 to 20 dollars. I got it on 20 dollars after the Steam sale. So, where do I begin? Um, I love this game a lot. One of my favorite games of the year. Um, it's really hard to explain because I don't think anybody's really talked about like its controls more than the actual lunacy that happens in here. And uh, we're talking about a series. Check it out. Farlane uh, Raiden figure. Gray Fox Clear. This came out like in 1999, 2000 after the first batch. Really badass looking. Can't get enough of this. Yeah, no, I, I bring that up because I'm using the Gray Fox skin file and I'm showing you off uh, a really cool sequence that I love in the game. I'm trying a different way to show you how I like this game. So, here we go. This is my favorite point of the game. This is where the game changes radically and kind of lays its cards on the table. Check it out. Gray Fox. Pretty badass. Okay, I'm going to do a few fights and then I'll uh, explain more about the game. Alright, first things first. Um, it's a very modest game. I mean, a lot of people are talking about how crazy the cinematics are, but they've been saying that about the Metal Gear games for a while. Really it's a very simple parasite. Let's see if we can get this up again. There we go, got both. It's a very simple parry system in which you react at the last second, and then you immediately counter their attack and go into like a series of attacks. The combat is modest, it's not heavy in the combos, it's all about parry, so it feels more like a fight. It's all about finesse. Then you activate a quick time event, do some damage, then you send Zatsu back. Then you get the four, or you can go fuck wild on it. I've already beaten the game about four times, so I've upgraded uh, riding up to the tree. I love that. The cool thing about this combat is just how simple it is, and this is an so rewarding. It's not trying to be combo heavy, like some other games. These guys look good. Another thing I like a lot is that in the midst of all this chaos, it's easy to read. It's easy to read the enemy. Sell their armor types. Should be able to gimp him about that. 
Okay. No, no meat. That's just cruel. Yeah, get a blue, so then you could, uh. Hit him, hit him. Again, this is a very simple mechanic, and it kind of goes contradicts what other fighting games have been trying to. I'm sorry, uh, beat 'em ups, third-person action games. There's a lot of terms for this: spec spectral fighter, um, which is a term that I've never heard before. But uh, compared to Ninja Gaiden and Devil May Cry, this is a little bit different. In fact, this is the same guys did Bayonetta, Beautiful Joe, God Hand. Uh, Okami, uh, god, they, they made so much in this genre that they pretty much know how to make it. And this one's different. It doesn't play like Bayonetta. It has a lot of Bayonetta's over the top. The other thing that's interesting is that, again, this is a Middle Gear game, so it's very faithful to the Middle Gear universe. And considering it's a new developer, just only presentation wise, it's kind of the only thing that's different about it. These are the stealth portions, which are very, very modest, not anything near as complicated as one would imagine. It's not exactly Tenchu, and it's not exactly... Oh, Dryden, very good! Instead, it's this... The main exit is sealed. I very much doubt you can get through there. The catwalk above you is connected to a corridor meant for transporting materials. You can take that to the elevator. Yeah, there's this guy. I'm gonna take him out like this. Check this out. Okay, we got a lot of Metal Gear themes in here. The uh, oil barrels have been brought in from uh, Metal Gear 4, which you can roll around with them, which is kind of fun, and Raiden will vomit just like Snake did. That's a kill. Yeah, you gotta be really fast with these. Probably alarm someone by doing some jump. I did. Okay, that guy's gonna come to me. Yeah, no, I wanted to talk about this. Um, the development cycle of these games was technically about three years, and um, they didn't do much. So then they handed it over to Platinum, who's expert on this genre. And uh, they made a game that's... Something about its physical nature of controls is a lot different than how it would have been. Kojima has done action games like Zone of the Enders and uh, Zone of the Enders 2, which could have rivaled something like this. But instead, they didn't, and uh, they just had problems. Platinum had a development cycle of about 15 months, which is shocking compared to most of this games of this caliber. So, you might want to say this isn't a AAA game, because they didn't spend those three years like most AAA games usually do. Instead, this feels like a PS2 game. There's a lot of, like, things disappear, there's still arenas, there's still these elements clunkiness of like a simple game. Okay, this guy's getting stuck here. He's kind of on patrol, but kind of just sticks here for a bit. And if you go really, really quiet, you can do an ninja kill. The massives are really, really good. Not switch your items until you're completely standing still. Which is again a very modest aspect of this game. Compared to like Double May Cry uh, DMC that you like. He's 
guys are really, really hard. Look at that. modest game. I keep saying that because it's different. It's not God of War. It's not Devil May Cry. It, maybe it's a little bit closer to Devil May Cry. I think a lot of people are trying to bring that up because they feel that's their best comparison with it. It's less on the combos. It's got elements just like Devil May Cry. Um, but it's more of a Metal Gear game in that there's still long codex do stuff like this. But the problem is, once you activate one of these customization or VR missions, you go straight to a uh, the last checkpoint, which kind of makes it feel clunky. Again, a short development cycle. Um, All right. It plays so really well. That's the thing that I kind of want to emphasize. This PC port is kind of bad. It's poorly optimized. I don't recommend it unless you hit that to have No worries. Um, Actually, I should uh, thank you. It, it runs pretty well, about? but the last fight you're gonna have you, to like switch everything down to low to get that last hit because then that's really, really that a problem. More or less. I from the you, um, you can after it. What else can I do? Well, if Roger. I'm trying to see if I can get out of this dialogue tree. Yeah, no, it's it's pretty good. I mean, it's if you like this type of genre, you should really check it out. It's <laughs> different. It doesn't play like Metal Gear. Um, it also doesn't play like much, much of the other fighters out there. I mean, uh, beat em ups, third person character action games, which I can't stand that term again. Um, it doesn't play like this. Stuff. Via the it's great really, really ahead. crazy. Its story is really, 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 really entertaining. Really, really amusing. Which, again, I I've debated this a lot with my friends. Considering how long they spent on it, there's still some elements of the original Metal Gear storyline in here. A lot of the design work still feels like Metal Gear, which is kind of shocking because. For a 15 month cycle, you'd imagine they would just pull out stuff from Vanquish and Bayonetta, and they didn't. They just immediately did a great game, which is why I'm recommending this again. Um, I think I'd recommend the PS3 version more than I would the PC version. The PC version is nice, it's got all the other stuff in it. It took me 8 bucks to buy the uh, PS3 version and all the extras on it. Here it cost me about 20 bucks. And if I were to get a used copy of the uh, PS3 version, it would be about 20 bucks, and then 20 more bucks for the extra DLC stuff. So again, savings on here. If you can run. It runs modest. There's keyboard and mouse support. There's all the other stuff. Plus, I don't even get the Great Fox outfit, which is one of the reasons why I recommend this version. It runs slower. Um, you'd have to crank it down by a lot, turn off a lot of things, which, in order to get it at 60 frames, and once you get it at 60, it's pretty crazy, it feels like you're running around in butter. It's really, really amazing. This is really, really, a just an amazing experience of a game. teammate of uh, Solid Snake that uh, joined Big Boss. And uh, the big thing about him is that um, 
It's really the first cyborg ninja in the series. So you see it's great to talk about. And if you have to play Monster oh, Sword 1, which a lot of you haven't, or at least played to it's sold like a, more than any of the other games did. But the whole uh, Metal Gear mythos isn't too heavy on this. There's a few elements that reference the key events of uh, Metal Gear Solid 4, so it's not too much. A lot of people will be asking things, but there's still codex if you want to go into it. The interface into the codex is kind of plunky, so you might be disappointed if you want to try that. So overall, this is a really, really good game. I mean, I don't know, Platinum just really went all out. They made an original game. It feels a lot like The Matrix in some of its elements. Um, it's really, really fun. The sense of the sense of control and the sense of speed and motion is really, really amazing. And unlike other Another games that have come out at the time. Because if you're coming in here comparing it with God of War, if you're coming in here comparing it with DMC, you might be disappointed big time. You might be disappointed, but you also might be excited because you're not trying something.